Tell me about a challenge you faced when working with sales. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Solutions Architect mock interview with Exponent. My name is Kevin Wei, and I'm super excited to be doing this Behavioral Solutions Architect mock interview with Pocket today. Now, before we jump into the actual question, Pocket, do you want to say a few words first just to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, thanks, Kevin. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Pulkat Mathur. I'm a senior solutions architect at uh, Salesforce. Um, I've been working as a solutions architect for quite some time right now with different companies. I've been in consulting also with product uh, companies quite a bit. And on a day-to-day -day basis, I work with our Salesforce products to make our customers successful using that. And just before we go forward, I also have a small disclaimer. So even though I'm an employee of Salesforce, but whatever I say during this video is my personal um, opinion itself as, and, and it's not uh, related to Salesforce. Great, makes sense. Thanks, Pokit. So here's the question that I'm going to ask. This is a very behavioral question, and it's very common for any sort of like leadership cross-functional um, interviews that you might face in your Solutions Architects interviews. So here's the question. Tell me about a challenge you faced when working with sales. Right. So before we deep dive into the question, I would just like to mention something about the dynamics of working with sales teams. So solutions architects, they typically come from a technical background. And coming from a technical background, more often than not, solutions architects can be really objective. So, you know, it is either a yes or no in, uh, for them. Whereas if you work with sales teams, you will see that they do not work in this fashion. So, you know, they are not really objective. They try to push the deal as much as they can. And, you know, try to uh, get access to as many stakeholders as possible to make the deal work. So this can sometimes cause a little bit of friction between the two parties. Um, and it is really important to understand, you know, some kind of problems that you face in order to, you know, know how to solve them. So typically, uh, most amount of problems you face while working with sales teams or sales reps are um, about which direction do you want to take the conversation with the customer. So uh, let me just give you a quick example. So I used to work with a company previously and uh, the company's product could be deployed in any region across the world. But our uh, uh, customer of um, the company, they wanted to deploy the company's product in China. So when you deploy in China, it is a little bit more tricky than deploying in any other um, region across the world due to you know, firewall uh, restrictions and such. <clears throat> And during the first discovery call, I got to know this and I was immediately of the opinion that, you know, we should run this by the security team of the uh, customer so that they are on the same page as us about, you know, the potential limitations of networking, firewall, uh, security, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas the sales rep was not on the same page. So he wanted me to push ahead with showing the CEO and the CTO of the company, the technical features, the functional features of the product itself. But um, what I could understand at that moment was that no matter how good our features are, if the security team of the customer does not approve the way we deploy in China, then you know the deal is not going to close. So, and in that way, our effort of showcasing the product's feature to the CEO and CTO over a couple of meetings would, would have been a waste. So I had to, uh, so what I did was I had a really clear chat with the, um, you know, sales rep that was uh, assigned to me. I made him understand all the challenges that we could face and I could make him understand the amount of time that we can potentially waste on this deal if we do not figure out the security bit uh, first of all. So finally, I'm very glad that, you know, we could come to a common um, understanding and we were on the same page about how to proceed uh, forward with the client. So that was really good. Okay, interesting. So you were able to understand the needs of the customer and you were able to communicate these clearly just to make sure that any of the work wasn't done for waste, especially just due to, due to the unique challenges working in China with the firewall. Absolutely, yes. That's okay, right. interesting. Um, let me, I'd like to push you a little bit more here, Polkit. Um, why don't you tell me about another challenge that you faced? Right, so... Um, as a solutions architect, it is a very, very common ask to, you know, get 
um, requests from sales reps saying, hey, we got a new customer and why don't you do a demo of our product for him or her, right? That's a really common ask and anybody who has been in the solution architecture world for any amount of time would have definitely come across this uh, request from a sales rep. But I think it's very important to understand, you know, what is the customer's motive? What is the customer going to gain after implementing the uh, product? And before doing a demo, it is really important to do a good discovery. Sometimes, in my personal opinion, what I feel is that the sales reps, they sometimes push ahead with demoing the product itself because they want to get something in front of the customer that can, you know, hopefully make the customer excited about the uh, product. However, any enterprise product is very complex, right? And if you don't show the correct use cases, which are really relevant to the client, then the chances of a sale decrease. So what I always suggest and what hopefully, you know, uh, I've been able to get on the same page with my sales steps about is the need to do a very good discovery. So unless you know the top three priorities of the customer, in my opinion, you should not go ahead with a demo. So that's also a challenge that I faced working with the, my sales reps, uh, that getting pushed to do a demo without doing enough discovery. So the importance of di uh, discovery is really high. I see. So just setting the right expectations as to when doing a demo, obviously because you and all the other solution architects have limited time, also limited bandwidth, just making sure that you're spending the right time doing the demos and um, you're setting yourself and the customer up for success too. Absolutely, absolutely. Interesting. Um, so it sounds like you, you, you know, you're facing these challenges day to day in your solutions architect role at Salesforce. What are some things that you'll do to avoid these kinds of problems or mitigate these kinds of problems as you work in the future? So what I've seen excellent sales teams do, and when I say sales team, it means the sales rep plus the solutions um, architect. What I've seen these two is be on the same page. So unless both parties are not on the same page, you cannot make good deal uh, happen as quickly and as efficiently as you would like. So for example, what used to happen at one of my previous companies was that the SEs used to hold enablement sessions on various areas of the product for the sales reps. So a sales rep might or might not be technical, more often than not, they are not. But what an SE can do from his or her side is take them through the product, take them you know, through the most important use cases, which the product is being used for, and at least enable them to talk on a 101 level about the product itself. So this can lead to a really good scenario where you know the sales rep can himself or herself do a little bit of discovery before actually coming to the SE. So when you see opportunities, a large number of opportunities, actually uh, they can be disqualified in discovery itself. And um, like you said uh, yourself, solution architects are really busy. So um, if an opportunity is sufficiently qualified before they get involved in it, that is that works out to be in the favor of everybody. So if, uh, so yeah, that is one way I've seen so, uh, solution architects and uh, sales reps working well together. So solutions, solution architects enabling the sales reps on the 101 version of the product. But I would also like to say that this goes the other way as well. So solution architects, most of the time, they do not understand the sales dynamics, you know, the working with uh, C-suite and how communication should be structured. So it is really important for solution architects to also be on, on the same page with the uh, sales reps. And in some of my previous companies, I've seen sales reps run sessions for SEs or solution um, architects in order to you know, tell them how to communicate with C-level stakeholders, to you know, um, uh, tell them how to close the deal, uh, how do you ensure that you, know, a customer, that you have done a good uh, discovery. So yeah. These are some of the ways that I've seen frequently that help. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Just making sure there's synergy between the sales reps as well as the solution architects, empowering each other, making sure that you're setting them up for success, they're setting you up for success. Um, good stuff. Great. Um, th those are all the questions I have. You know, if this is an actual interview, I'll stop the interview here and I'll, I'll ask you if you had any questions for me. But 
um, for the purposes of this video, I would love maybe just for this rest of our time, if you had, let's just say one tip, right? Let's say that uh, one tip that you would give yourself back in the day when you were applying for a solution architect role, um, what would that one tip be? And um, yeah, just anything that would be helpful for someone who's seeking to be in your shoes today uh, as a solution architect at a big tech company. Absolutely. My number one tip is be an active and great listener and keep an open mind. Because every customer you are going to work with, every sales rep you are going to work with is going to be different, right? And one thing that should be, you should absolutely not do as a solution architect is have a view of how the world works in your mind, because that will not enable you to know to you know ask the right questions and you know work efficiently with the uh, sales reps. Listen to everybody's opinion because everybody's opinion is important and try to agree with your sales rep on what is the best way to go forward for a client. So that's nice. Yeah, I think I think that's that's not only great advice for solution architects, but also just generally working with people, relationships with people at work or even outside of work, right? Understanding that not everyone comes from the same background. Everyone's opinion is valuable. Listening, helping people feel like they're, they're, they're heard, even if you disagree. So I love it. Um, that's it for this video. So that's our Solutions Architect mock interview. This is a very typical behavioral uh, style question that you might face in your interviews. And with that said, good luck with your upcoming Solutions Architect video. And for more videos, check out Exponent for the best career tech interview prep videos. Thanks everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.